Today is Valentine's Day. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day. And I would like to begin by acknowledging a very special person in my life, which is my mother, Pearl Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> Wave your hand for me, Pearl. <laughs> It is due to my mom's sacrifices and her devotion to God that I am who I am today. Um, I'm the pastor's Amen. daughter, Amen. and my dad was a full-time minister, Amen. and my mother um, decided that she was going to stay at home and raise her six children, five girls, one boy. And um, it's because of my mother that, really, I am who I am today. Um, don't want to cry, <laughs> but um, I'm so honored to have my mom. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you. <laughs> Let him um, all of my siblings have graduate degrees. My brother has a PhD. My older sister is an attorney. Um, my other sister is working on a master's degree. Um, I have a doctorate degree. My baby sister has a master's in Spanish. Um, is right now in Hong Kong. She loves traveling. And um, seriously, my mother gave up her life to raise her children. And I can recall as a child, um, <coughs> Going to my friends' houses and staying the night, Friday, Saturday night. On Sunday morning, Pro Lindsay was picking me and my friend up for Sunday school and taking us to church. <laughs> it was not an option to not go to church. And not only that, I marveled at how she raised us and never once raised her voice in a sense. I've never known whether to just yell and go off on us. It was just. She just had this patience that I don't understand it because she raised these six children. <laughs> but um, I didn't mean to say all of that, but I just want to say that, Mom, I really do love you, and I'm so thankful for your support and your influence. <coughs> so thank you. Amen. Okay, so let's begin on my message for today. Um, Yes, at one time I lived in Hawaii. I lived in Kuku, Hawaii. I was there um, for a year working as a physical therapist. And I was having my quiet time with God. And um, as I'm having this quiet time with God, uh, I, I hear God telling me, I want you to speak. I've given you this gift, I want you to speak. And I'm reading at that time Jeremiah chapter one, and it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Elias, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said, I have put my words in your mouth. I got excited. I was like, yes, Jesus, I'm going to speak for you. I got on Facebook. I made a status update. Hey, I'm gonna speak for God. You wanna hire me? You know, shoot me an email. Thank God no one responded. <laughs> because I was not ready to speak for God. And God was like, sweetie, you are getting ahead of yourself. I need you to have a seat. <laughs> we gotta work on some things in your life. We gotta do some heart surgery. We have to do some things to transform you. And then when I say you're ready, then we will, I will allow you to speak on my behalf. But until that happens, you are still in school. You are still in the ICU right now. I am still literally doing a heart transplant every single day. And as the pastor spoke to earlier today, she's absolutely right. If you don't spend time with God, if you don't feed on that daily bread every day, you are not going to be satisfied. I can stand before you as a 34-year-old single woman mm -hmm. who has had relationships and has went to school and has traveled the world, mm -hmm. and I can tell you, those things were great. Mm -hmm. My relationships, my, some of my boyfriends were great men. Uh, some places I've been to, amazing experiences. 
Getting a degree in physical therapy, a difficult task, but has afforded me so many opportunities. At the end of the day, does not satisfy. Oh, does not fulfill Amen. me at all. Oh, because at the end of the day, only God oh, will fulfill right. that void in our lives. Nothing else we put before him. Amen. I don't care if you have the nicest car. That's right. At the end of the day, that car is not going to give you a hug. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. At the end of the day, I don't care if you're the greatest husband, the greatest relationship. Amen. At the end of the day, he's human. Yes. He's going to fail you. Yes. Trust and believe. Oh, yes, <laughs> he is going yes, to fail you. Yes, so we have to every day, um, we have to every day spend time with God. Yes. We have to every day spend time with God. I want to start, I'm going to begin reading in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to start verses 13 through 18. <clears throat> and it says, Now who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. Christ suffered for our sins once for all, time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. I want to start with a brief story about a girl named Susan. <clears throat> Locked in a dark room without food and water, 14-year-old Susan was <coughs> left to die by her father. Susan and her young brother, both Muslims, lived alone with their father after he divorced their mother. Life was routine, schools, school, chores, a little time to play. But on that fateful day in March 2010, Susan's life took a dramatic turn when the evangelist visited her school and she decided to trust Christ for her salvation. After a month of keeping it secret, news reached her father that she had converted to Christianity. Enraged, her father confined her to a small room. Her brother, Mubasa, was warned not to tell anyone that Susan was locked up and was instructed not to give her any food. Young Mubasa tried to help his sister by roasting bananas when their father was away. He also dug a hole through the door where he could pour water through. Susan could drink water using her tongue, but most days she could only feed on mud. For six months, Susan never saw sunlight. A nearby neighbor became concerned about not seeing her. Finally, Mubasa feared that his sister was dying. He told the neighbor that Susan was locked up in one of the rooms of the house. Alerting authorities, the police rushed to the house and broke down the door. Rescuing Susan, they took her to a nearby hospital. During her ordeal, Susan had lost the use of both of her legs. After spending the next 10 months confined to a hospital bed recovering, Susan was later transported to a home in Kenya. Living now with an open doors co-worker and his family, her love for the Lord has grown. When asked how she is feeling, she confidently responds, I am happy and not in pain. I would never leave my Jesus who died for me. Although the months of torture were horrific, Susan has forgiven her father and asked for just two things. The ability to walk again so that she can tell others about Jesus and salvation for her father are too great. There are many stories of Christians being persecuted around the world. Recently, we have seen Christians beheaded and crucified for their beliefs by the ISIS group. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the United States has not yet experienced the degree to which our Christian brothers and sisters are, are being persecuted. However, Christians are experiencing persecution in the United States. Recently, an Atlanta fire chief, Kelvin Cochran, was terminated from his job for writing a book based on his Christian beliefs. 
In his own words, he said, the book expresses my deeply held religious convictions on many subjects. More than 75% of the United States identifies as Christian. 57% believe the devil, and nearly eight in 10 Americans believe the Bible to be the inspired word or literal word of God. North Korea tops as a, as a worst oppressor of Christians for the 13th consecutive, years, consecutive year, but the list is dominated by African and Middle Eastern nations. Iraq, which experienced the mass displacement of Christians from its northern region, ranked third. Syria was listed as fourth. Due to the reign of ISIS in the world touring region, Nigeria ranked 10th due in part to the more than 1,000 Christians murdered for kidnapped by ter terrorist groups such as Boko Haram. Also included in the top 10 are Somalia, Afghanistan, Sudan, Iran, Pakistan, and Eritrea. In Odish, India, some villages have, have banned Christians from buying or selling in their, local, in their local markets, as well as banning them from getting drinking water from the local well forcing them to drink non-potable water from the river. When Christians have rebuffed this prohibition and, call, and use a common will anyway, they have been chased down by angry mobs and severely beaten. Even, those, per, even though persecution is occurring in many parts of the world, we are reminded to not be afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Getting back to our text, to say, to our text today, my first point is do not be afraid. In 1 Peter 3.13 it says, Now who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Be disturbed, but honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Don't be afraid and worry. Peter recognizes that Christians may suffer for righteousness sake. Life is not a cruise ship. Amen. It is a battleship. <laughs> and I'll stop right there. <laughs> um, seriously, I think that, including myself, a lot of us, <clears throat> we have this uh, 